Well, good afternoon and welcome to my weekly um, uh, video. <clears throat> a couple of things happened this past week of note. Uh, first thing I just want to mention is the, um, the dam uh, breakage in Midland. Midland is one of the communities that I had an opportunity to visit during our, our cycling, um, the Warrior Cycling Tour, either last year or the year before. And a great community. Uh, they were very, very welcoming. And to have to deal with uh, flooding, the massive flooding that they've had to deal with in addition to the uh, COVID-19 is uh, almost just uh, too much. So our hearts go out to them. Um, we had our uh, uh, town hall uh, webcast to um, talk about uh, restart. And it, it, was, it was on Thursday, this past Thursday, the 21st. Uh, we had uh, good participa participation. Uh, I'm told that a couple thousand uh, people uh, tuned in. Um, the main uh, purpose was to um, talk about what happens in phase one and phase two. Phase one meaning when the governor's stay-at-home order was uh, going to um, lapse, which was uh, uh, in May 28th, and then uh, phase two being the fall semester. On the phase one, a lot of people were questioning what they, what they were going to do on May 29th, um, anticipating that yeah, the governor's stay at home order was going to be lifted. Um, I personally thought that she was going to extend it, and she did extend it. So it's, it's uh, somewhat of a moot point, but it, it did uh, give us an opportunity to talk about the fact that we, regardless of what the um, our governor does uh, in terms of her stay at home uh, orders, uh, we want to uh, continue to be guided by what we think is the uh, local circumstances and what's in the best interest of um, the uh, Wayne State community. and. Um, even if the lift order is lifted, that we still want people to uh, stay at home, if, uh, if at all possible. Um, we were able to discuss a number of uh, various uh, other scenarios and uh, continue to uh, stay tuned. All of this is on our, our website, and so you're able to um, uh, stay up to date on all of our uh, deliberations. Uh, one of the questions I was asked, which was a good question, is, on phase two, the fall uh, semester uh, restart, um, when do we have to actually make a decision whether we're going to go predominantly online or predominantly um, person to person? And as I mentioned before, I, I think we'll have some combination of both. It's just a matter of you know what proportion will be uh, online or remote and what proportion will be in person. And uh, we want to. Uh, make that decision as late as possible, uh, guided by the science and the public health at the, at the, at the time, but at the same time uh, to be able to give our students and our faculty as much uh, preparation time as possible. And we think that time period is going to be somewhere around mid-July, where we will have to uh, come up with some uh, definitive decisions about what proportion of our our uh, classes would be online and what proportion would be uh, in person and which courses would be uh, in person. Uh, by the way, the reason why I've got uh, Quincy here is um, he just received a haircut today and um, uh, Jacqueline did a pretty good job, um, but you know, there's a couple of uneven areas and uh, particularly right here and um, um, now you see why I letting my hair grow out. Um, I don't think Jacqueline liked that comment, but he, he looks fine. Okay, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about a, a natural experiment, given that different states have been um, uh, relaxing their restrictions at, at a different uh, rate, and then the, the kind of relaxation and, and I, you know, when I think about natural experiments, uh, I, I think of Jon Snow 
and uh, his uh, cholera investigation. John Snow was, to me, the, the father of modern epidemiology. And um, the whole issue of how cholera was spread was discovered by him in a natural experiment. So I kind of want to exp explain a little bit about what's meant by a natural experiment. In a natural experiment, um, the, the researcher does not uh, do an intervention. Uh, circumstances are such that um, uh, there are two different uh, kinds of situations uh, that are naturally occurring and um, was not uh, due to the researcher causing an intervention. Uh, in the case of uh, John Snow, cholera was rampant at, at, the, at the time. This was in the uh, 1850s, uh, 1851, 1852. And uh, John Snow realized that it was probably caused by contaminated water and not by uh, contaminated air, which was the predominant theory at the time. And uh, to prove this, um, uh, he examined the uh, water supply from two water companies that served the same area. Let's just say one was uh, water company A and the other one was B. What was interesting is that the uh, community, I think it was South London, was served by both uh, water companies and there was no rhyme or reason as to which company served which household. Uh, sometimes uh, a, a person directly across the street was served by uh, a different water company uh, from a, a person living um, um, across, the, across the street being served by, let's say, water company A versus a person across the street by B or, or a neighbor right next to you being served by a different water company. And in, and in fact, in some instances, there were different parts of a household that were served by uh, both different um, uh, water companies. And so he, so he did a meticulous uh, examination of which uh, water company was, was um, uh, serving which household and, and then looked at what the uh, cholera uh, deaths were uh, based on these two uh, water companies and found that one was much higher uh, death rate than the other and that this um, uh, one that was uh, much higher death rate was because they were getting their water from uh, a certain area of the Thames River that was contaminated and the, uh, the other one, let's say the uh, water company B, had moved their location upstream a year previously which caused uh, this opportunity to have a natural experiment. One that had moved their location to a cleaner area of the Thames River and the other one that kept their, their um, water supply in the same contaminated area of the river and then seeing that um, one had a much higher death rate than the other. Now, it, it's always good for a natural experiment to be corroborated by, uh, by real experiment. And in this case, there was another opportunity to do that. Not everyone got their water supply from water company A or B. They had public pumps. And uh, John Snow realized that the, uh, there was a particular pump on Broad Street that um, had a lot of infections. People who were using that particular pump, uh, the cholera uh, deaths were were much higher than anywhere else by, by orders of magnitude. And so he was trying to get the uh, local authorities to do something about it, and you know, they didn't because nobody believed that water was a, was a cause of cholera. So in the, um, in the dead of night, um, he actually went and he took the pump off of the, um, uh, this particular Broad Street uh, pump. And, and lo and behold, the cases of cholera went down dramatically and he saved a lot of lives. Now, unfortunately, people still didn't um, believe him and the local authorities uh, ended up fixing the pump uh, and the cases uh, went up. So the intervention in, in this situation was uh, removing that pump, which caused a, um, a, um, a, a, a dramatic decrease in the uh, cholera cases and in the deaths, corroborating what he suspected from the natural experiments. 
I mention this because um, I, I think that's you know, what's going on now. Unfortunately, because of the um, the high infection rate of the COVID-19 and the high morbidity and mortality associated with it, and the fact that states are doing their own thing, there's no uh, a national policy, uh, but individual states are able to do their own, it, it offers an opportunity to unfortunately uh, have uh, a series of natural experiments. Uh, I, I do think that at some point there will be a second wave and it will be interesting to see if uh, those states that have relaxed their um, specific policies uh, differently um, uh, than other states that may be more restrictive, whether there's a difference. That is the, the natural experiment. Then obviously the uh, intervention will then be to, um, if there's uh, one state that uh, did something differently than another state and, and, it, and it caused the, the rate to go up much higher, then to um, uh, intervene and, and see if the, um, the rates go back down. Um, I, I think that it, this is just one of these unfortunate situations um, that, uh, but it does allow uh, us to be able to uh, gather data and be better prepared uh, for the next pandemic if we're able to learn uh, from, from this one. Uh, in terms of book four uh, this week, I, I haven't started a new one. I did finish uh, both the uh, uh, the ones I was uh, reading earlier, and uh, you might recall last week I mentioned that one was about Musashi Miyamoto, um, a, a great Japanese swordsman who in his later life was uh, extremely um, uh, talented uh, artist, and then William Scarborough, a uh, person who uh, rose from uh, slavery to uh, be a classic uh, classic scholar and a, a university a president. Uh, both men were just extremely um, inspirational. I haven't had a chance to start a new one yet, uh, but <clears throat> many, uh, well, several weeks ago, I mentioned that a particular Wayne State student uh, was um, uh, commenting that I should talk more about cycling and, and not books. Um, well, it just so happens that I, that I, I was cycling on Heinz Drive uh, let's say today is Monday, so uh, on Saturday, and I heard my name being called out, and lo and behold, it was this person from uh, Wayne State who uh, made that uh, cycling comment. Uh, his name is Evan. He had been training for uh, triathlons. He's, a, he's a, also a runner, uh, a competitive runner, and um, uh, I must say he was, uh, he was a good cyclist too. We cycled for, for a little while and had an opportunity to talk for a little bit. Um, just thought I would uh, uh, throw that, that story in because it's uh, uh, so uh, interesting how um, Wayne State Warriors are everywhere and um, um, this was a, a case in point where, you know, least expected, uh, I hear my name being called and it was the exact same student who uh, thought I should be talking about cycling rather than books. I'm gonna continue talking about books but because we are a university, but I thought that was an interesting uh, a story. Warrior Strong, until next week.